Our second speaker is Professor Rudiger Kampe from Yale University, currently the chair of the German department, professor for comparative literature. Before that, Professor Kampe was a professor at Johns Hopkins University. Like Professor Elisabeth Weber, he's part of the Freiburg clan. He accompanies Friedrich Kittler from the very, very early, um, early ages and early days. Um, his uh, PhD was written uh, um, in Freiburg. Um, his most recent publications, a very, very long list, is the translation of his Habilitation to English, The Game of Probability, Literature and Calculation from Pascal to Kleist, and a special uh, issue um, at Telos for Hans Blumenberg. Um, today, Professor Kampe will speak about Hitler's human, human humanities on implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Nimrod. And um, uh, I also want to thank, uh, if I dare to do so after uh, this morning, I uh, also want to thank Avital and uh, Arne for the invitation and for the possibility to be here. And um, uh, this is a commemorative event, as uh, it's written on the, on the poster. Uh, but I think also, and we heard that increasingly, and we heard that from Elizabeth is also, I think, uh, perhaps a, a new beginning to, uh, as Avital said, to an American reception of Kittler. So Kittler's Humanities on Implementation. Uh, after giving one of his suggestive analyses of the storage function of the computer architecture, Friedrich Kittler continues, and I quote, if now, on the basis of this model, the model of the, um, the computer and the uh, architecture of uh, storage functions in it, if now we return to the European history, it seems that the technologies of storage which are available at any given moment can be determined with some plausibility according to these parameters, static versus dynamic, solid state, solid state drive versus mechanical, RAM versus ROM, we should, however, not presuppose without further scrutiny that the storage systems of every possible culture have already been implemented, implemented as such. What follows then after this quote is a rapid survey, as you, I'm sure you all know, of this uh, European history. In it, Kittler lists non-technological practices and institutions of various sorts, literary and visual effects details from the history of the book, episodes from the histories of the printing press or the postal services, from administration, education, and finally of what has been called the experimentalization of man and nature in the 19th century. These are all non-technological practices and institutions indicative for a certain culture which, for Kittler, uh, I quote again or paraphrase again, can be determined with some plausibility according to storage function in the functions in the PC. With the qualification that, I quote again, we should not assume without questioning that they have necessarily been implemented, implemented as such. It is obviously it is obvious that the word it is obviously the word implemented that triggers and supports this enormous enterprise of media-based history of Western culture. And in German, implementieren to implement is in fact more or less restricted to its meaning in computer science, the realization of a technical specification or algorithm as a program, a software component, or other computer systems by programming and deployment. In Kittler's usage, the word makes it possible to think every given Western culture according to the architecture of storage functions in the computer and hence Western history in the first place. Implementing is the networker in the network, not only of discourses, but also practices, procedures of government, education, scientific research, and of technology proper. And with a network, as you all know, I'm referring to, obviously referring to the American title of um, uh, Kittler's first and still, I guess, most uh, influential book, Discourse Networks. 
But this repetitiously networking word, a metakinetic word, others might have said, implementation has been, in my experience, one of the reasons why for us, some four decades ago in Freiburg, Germany, Felix Kittler's seminar sounded so different from what we used to hear. So I keep returning to the word like Kittler, Kittler's description of the PC architecture returns to the European history, or rather, I should say why his European history returns to the PC, and it is therefore the reason why I've chosen implementation for following the advice, Kittler's advice, and doing some scrutiny on it in my 25 minutes this morning. Even if rereading what I heard back in Freiburg as a graduate student at the end of the 1970s makes me wonder about the hermeneutic rhetoric, and I may, be, may say force or power, of such words and of the discourses they were weaving. This is not what I'm going to address today. There is, a, I guess, a more interesting level of inquiry, an inquiry beyond but not unrelated to our fascination back then with such words. For one thing, I assume that implementation, implementieren, occurs rather as a word than a concept in Kittler. And this is not because it is a metaphor that would not mature and become a concept, but rather because, rather because for the, in the opposite, because it touches upon an area that has never been anything else than a concept, a piece of technization without a life world in Husserl's terms, uh, a, technol a terminological concept without a metaphorical prehistory to speak with Bloomberg. Second, implementation seems to me to operate on the level of, the, of a specifically modern attempt to respond to the end of Platonic Aristotelian architecture of knowledge and the advent of a mathematical technological science of singularities or history, historia, a response that has been termed nuova scienza by some, uh, science of the spirit by others, theory of culture or humanities, again, in different corners. A few more remarks on the meta-historical, meta-kinetic character of the word implementation first. Memories are made of you, the essay from which I quoted in the beginning, offers one uh, of the many versions of the story Friedrich Kittler told from the 1980s on to the end of the century, a story that connects PC architecture with Europe's history. These two decades of intensive rewriting and retelling are often remindful of the ways certain phenomenologists, Husserl among them, whom Kittler didn't particularly like, repeated the description of the perception of time or the structure of intersubjectivity. The same formula, the same description, the same analysis is, re is resumed again and again with a new word here, an added fact there, a slight variation in this respect, a cautious new step in another. In Kittler's case, the story which is retold like one persisting story in the guise of many stories is not only but importantly the story of implementation. In order to give an idea of just the first turns in the storyline of memories are made of you, at the beginning Kittler mentions the mnemotechnics of ancient rhapsodes and orators but excludes them from the implementation-defined account of Western cultures. What makes him leave mnemo technique aside is that it does not result in any duration in time. Remaining within the realm of techne, we might say poetical and rhetorical devices of memory offer no hold of technology proper, and hence no hold for implementation. A mnemonic function that opens itself up to implementation becomes graspable first for Kittler in the pair of Egyptian, Greek, Roman inscription and the holy books of the Jews and the Christian Greeks. This is so because in this pairing, pairing of inscription and portable volume or codex, um, and, and as a consequence of their different modes of physical duration and time, the first structural quality of implemented storage emerges, the opposition, and that is the opposition of static versus dynamic storage systems, rest versus movement, as we may say. So the step zero, minimotechnics, and the step one, static inscription versus movable holy books, may already suffice to recognize the fundamental nature, or rather counter-nature, of the implementation process. It is a reversal 
uh, of the order of time, in a reversal of the order of time, and of what we usually call historical development, the story of implementation jumps always and categorically ahead of itself. Implementation refers to the more, or rather each time, the most complete mode of implemented program available. The PC architecture functions thus, thus as the measure of the existing most complete state of implementation for Kittler, and hence as a point of view from which all stories of implementations are written for his time, in, uh, for his moment in time, which is still ours, I guess. Um, Greek inscriptions and the epistles of St. Paul emerge in the story of implementation as articulated by a function ahead of them. In the case mentioned, the dichotomy of static, static versus dynamic storage systems. Implementation stories are thus reversed stories. It is always and importantly the algorithm or program that is technologically, that is te that is te that is technologically impl implemented. The nature of things, the nature of man, the life world, which Kittler would never mention without adding the so-called life world, are what we might call areas or sites of implementation, of implementation to come, so to speak. At the same time, implementation is non-teleological in, in Kittler. Technology is not another candidate for any form of nature. Technology, we might say, is implementability, and hence the genesis of the very reversal of time and development into its own cultural form of history. So, what kind of an enterprise is it to, to develop such a storyline? I'm aware that speaking of Kittler's humanities in this context may for some be in blatant violation with everything the humanities are supposed to stand for. And for others, I'm sure, it is anathema with respect to Friedrich Kittler and his professed anti-humanism. My point here is, however, not about ideologies or the critique of them. It is solely about the scope and the form of an argument. At two important uh, stages, we should think for a moment about that. At two important stages of his work, Friedrich Kittler inscribed his project into what in this country would be called the humanities, and in German lands, the sciences of the Hegelian spirit, the Geisteswissenschaften. The first one is, in his years, while preparing his first truly Kittlerian uh, uh, book, uh, Discourse Networks, he organized a lecture series in 1978 under the decisively German title, The Austreibung des Geistes aus den Geisteswissenschaften, the expulsion or exorcism of the spirit from the sciences of the spirit. As the title clearly indicates, Kittler announces an attack on the humanities or Geisteswissenschaften, spirited, Geist sciences of the spirit, but also the intention of taking them over. At this point of his, in his own thinking, he is only at the brink of juxtaposing his reconstruction of romantic literature we heard about as an effect of hermeneutics around 1800, his older project, with his new 1900 project, the advent of electric media and the destructive result on the romantic accomplishments, such as authorship, individual voice, and hermeneutics. In accordance with the envisaged two-part structure of discourse networks, Kittler announces his quest for a new form of humanities as the dispersal, the, the dispersal, sorry, the dispersal of the one romantic concept under which it had been conceptualized in the German case so far, the dispersal of the spirit. In an elegant move, he argues that ethnography, psychoanalysis, and system ling linguistics, which for him all three share in the heritage of the one science of the spirit or humanities after the end of Romanticism. Um, and he maintains that no scientific enterprise could ever unite these three heirs again. So the new humanities at this early point in 78 are not one for him. A little bit different in 1998, uh, some 70 years later, uh, uh, some 20 years later, in 1998, after further developing the story of implementation, Kittler gives a series of lecture under the title A Cultural History of the Theory of Culture. This is the second moment in, uh, of his inscribing himself in the enterprise of humanities, theory of culture, science of the spirit, etc. 
The lecture series from 1998 obviously aims at proposing media history as the final and now indeed reunited form of all possible theories of cultures, the very ground in which to anchor the history of all attempts to cope with culture scientifically. But it accomplishes the work of reunification, obviously, as a storyline and as a story, the cultural history, and not as a new theory which he had already given up in 78. The story of implementation unfolds and repeats itself in Kittler's work incessantly and methodically between and already and still within his earlier and later statements on the tasks and failures on the, of the humanities, the Geistes, Wissenschaft, and the theory of culture, and however we wish to call it. Seen from this perspective, implementation can be understood, I propose, as reformulating a basis, basic operation which occurs in all humanities, Geistes, Wissenschaft, and theories of culture, etc. One would have to begin, one would have to begin uh, where Kittler himself starts in uh, his cultural history of the theory of culture from Gian Battista Vico. In Vico, the operation in question can be paraphrased as creation out of ignorance. Creation out of ignorance, alias poetic creation, in, uh, is Vico's pendant for creation out of nothing, but with full no knowledge, the well-known model of creation for the Jewish Christian creator God, and for a history which as such neither allows nor requires a theory of cultural invention. All cultural invention is, for Vico, distinctively pagan. From the smallest units, the picciole favolette of myths and metaphors, to the th three fundamental cultural forms, divination, burial, marriage, all such inventions of pagan culture are there for giving duration in time and space. By organizing time itself in divination, the realm of the living in marriage, and the realm of the dead in burial. They accomplish this each time tentatively out of ignorance uh, in the latency of the creator God and his historical authorship, which he only exercises in the Christian Jewish and the Jewish Christian uh, history. The three core elements of spatial temporal duration, divination, burial, and marriage, are called in Vico the principle cose umane. Human things or human matters are the elements of the nuova scienza or humanities alla Vico, both in the material and a meta historical sense. They are cultural things insofar as they organize space and time in proto historical forms of duration. The operation which fulfills the equivalent of this function in Dilthey's Geisteswissenschaften is certainly much better known. It comes as no surprise, however, that Kittel, the editor of the expulsion of the mm, volume, Expulsion of the Spirit from the Humanities, um, uh, alias Sciences of the Spirit, leaves uh, Dilthey entirely out in his um, cultural history of the uh, cultural theory. But Dilthey is present not only through his blatant absence, but also in the guise of a heavily present Hegel. The defining operation in Diltai's Sciences of the Spirit is in fact nothing else than famously a generalized Hegelian theorem, the theorem of the objectified spirit. In Hegel, the relevant forms of objectified spirit emerge in the field, as you all know, of what he calls the ethical and the institutions of the family, law, the law of state versus law of family. In Diltai, everything that results from human activity and production can be seen under that aspect of an objectified uh, spirit, be it a, uh, a poem or a novel, the, the furniture in our homes, and certainly, uh, again, the law, the arts, the constitution, the systems of education, forms of socialization, etc. Again, all of these institutions or forms of objectified spirit are material elements of culture as well as seminal patterns for, again, providing duration in space and time. In contradistinction to Vico, however, Dilthey uh, Hegel's material, or Hegel Dilthey, I should say, um, material structural element of culture exhibits an, exhibit an essentially externalization and possible alienation in their production. Under its objectified form, spirit does no longer recognize itself. Such externalization may be more obvious in Hegel than in Diltai, but Diltai's heirs in the later decades, from Zimmel to Lukács to Heidegger, 
more than make good on this leg uh, in a broadly conceived Diltai type of uh, theoretical tradition. Now, in Vico's Cose Umane, the inventiveness of people, the moment of poetic creation, is always transparent as such, even if it is, unlike God's creation, a creation out of ignorance of its own grounds and purposes. In contradistinction, the institution of the objectified spirit juxtaposes interiority and exteriority in an emphatic manner. Hitler's implementation can be seen, and that's what I'm proposing, can be seen as the third generation of the same time of operation, after Vico's invention of Cose Umane and Hegel and uh, objectified spirit. Hitlerian implementation, the implementation of technology whose site of intervention are the human and the natural world, appears like a reversed invention out of ignorance and an invention out of ignorance which has learned the emphasis on exteriority from Hegel, Diltai, Heidegger. Importantly, however, technology is not an institution and hence not the work of objectification. The exteriority of technology and implementation does not result from alienation or anything else except itself. Implementation collapses the Diltai uh, Hegelian operation again into something as transparent and quasi self identical as Vico's Cose Umane. It is only that Cose Umane and implementation are the exact opposite of each other. Technology, technologically implemented programs, are the quasi self identity of externality. Put briefly, Kittler's implementation is another nuova sencia. A new science, however, which reverses sides. The nearly self-identical form of procedure of the poetic invention of Cose Humane returns upside down with the nearly self-identical processes of implementation. In them, practices and institutions appear as cultural elements to the extent that a technological function imposes its mark on them. If this is so, implementation is, however, not only the third generation version of the basic operation of culture, all humanities pr um, projects, I mean, um, every, every attempt to think something like humanity, which I think is beginning with Vico, all humanities projects have been undertaken in confrontation with and after the model of what was historically, what historically seems to emerge after them. They all mirror science and technology as that which is to come. Vico responds in the name of the old erudition to Descartes. Diltai reads theology and literature after the model of the psychophysiology of Hermann von Helmholtz and Gustav Fechner. Kittler's implementation theorem reveals the structure of the humanities project itself. Humanities are the response and the mirror of what comes after them. Humanity, humanities have nothing, nothing to do with uh, what, is, um, what, is, uh, what we know traditionally as the, as the trivium of the, of the, um, of the ancient, and, um, uh, ancient heritage. Humanities, from the, uh, from the moment on, form themselves as the site of implementation uh, to come, as the site of um, uh, mathematics and uh, technology to come. Even in an account of Kittler's humanities as short as the one I'm presenting this morning, at least two qualifications should be added to this uh, more or less sweeping uh, claim. The, the picture so far uh, only suggests, can only suggest the level on which implementation is operating and the type of problem I assume it is supposed to tackle in Kittler. It is quite a different thing to observe the functioning of the term in its context and to ask the question of its theoretical scope. Some, a few different contexts first. One might argue that Friedrich Kittler developed the argument of implementation in two histories of different scales, a small scale history and a large scale history. According to the two types of history, uh, histories, the way in which implementation works differ. Uh, even if I assume that only his later books, and in particular the planned series uh, Music and Mathematics, actively undertake what I call here the large-scale history, it has been there, there as a possibility, and Bernhard just pointed that out, it has been there as a possibility and a final horizon from the beginning, at least the beginning of Discourse Networks on. 
Discourse networks can, in this sense, be called a small scale history, even if under any normal scholarly circumstances, so for us, nous autres, uh, two centuries are not exactly a small span of time, but I'm, I'm thinking here in Kittlerian dimensions. So in Kittlerian dimensions, it's a small span of time. Uh, with its first part around 1800, uh, and its second part around 1900, Kittler starts from a two-step design. As such, uh, the book presupposes implementation, I, I assume, as its very basis um, and as the very basis of the book's design. It is perhaps therefore that the argument is not made and may, maybe cannot be made explicitly in, uh, in the book. For the readers, this presents a certain difficulty. They deal with two parts, the 1800 and 1900 parts, that are supposed to echo each other, but offer, in fact, very different accounts. And uh, one is a little bit um, lost alone with, uh, to figure out uh, how the one can, in fact, um, correspond to the other. The first part, and I resume what you all know, um, the first part around 1800 discusses romantic literature as the emblematic moment of the invention of the individual voice beh uh, behind the text, the author, and the realm of sense production and hermeneutic interpretation. The basis on which this romantic romanticism effect is achieved as a pedagogical educational one from alphabetization to the introduction of the interpretive assignment in high school education to the evocative structure of the literary text itself that teaches to be read uh, as the manifestation of an author's voice. Romantic literature as such is a dispositif of self-pedagogy. Around 1900, the second part responds by reconstructing the advent of film, gramophone, typewriter, as you know, as the moment of reversing such pedagogical effects, and importantly, if I understand correctly, all pedagogy with it. Partly the technological devices substitute ontological for the hermeneutic, in an ontological way for the hermeneutic operations of sense production. They simply are there um, instead of humans having have to do that. Partly they are developed as devices for experimentally exploring those operations in living people. With its two parts, Discourse Networks is neither a history of a certain uh, media technology in the development from Romanticism to, nor, uh, to uh, modernity. It's not really a media history. Nor is it an account of how training programs and literary in literacy change from Romanticism to Modernism in such a way that uh, as to result in authorship-oriented readings um, uh, versus a modernist interplay between literature and the new media. So it's neither, so to speak, a history uh, of, um, uh, of literacy uh, pedagogy. Instead, the argument is that the double mode of techno technologically substituting for and experimentalizing with sense production around 1900, reverses the very installation of hermeneutics through socialization and pedagogy around 1800. So reversing a Foucault-like style discipline of the reading body into technologies which test and substitute physiological functions is, in my view, the one important manner of introducing the argument of implement implementing culture in, uh, in, uh, in Hitler. The, uh, only with the, with the second part, the, the first part, so to speak, is identified as what it is. And this is, I think, the most complex and implicit version Kittler gave of his argument. And so far, I, I haven't really checked it, but I, as far as I know, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, use the word in the book. This specific instance of implementation seems at first sight to give the moment of technology or implementation a little bit less of a defining role. The discipline of the reading body plays already a more active or self-driven part in it than I characterized it at the beginning. And indeed, if there is anything for Kittler like a proto-technology, a technology before technology implemented, it is unexpectedly and a little bit paradoxically romantic literature, the literature of the authorial vo voice and the reader's training programs in interpretation. It is in this self-refashioning of the literary work that for once technology appears as anticipated or 
even prepared by what of, by that which is to be the site where implementation will take place. For Kittler itself, such self-technologizing of, of literature happens when literature retropes itself, when it retropes all the traditional rhetorical and poetic devices by the one figure of visualization, or as Kittler has it, hallucination. The visualization or hallucination of authorship, first of all, as you all know. In an essay in which he gives a first account of discourse networks, authorship and love, Kittler speaks indeed uh, in this context several times of a self-fulfilling prophecy of romantic literature um, <coughs> with regard to technology. Self-fulfilling prophecy then is the one and a very specific variant of implementation, implementation prepared for, by, and on the side where it is to take place. What I call the large-scale project comes fully into view, as I said, in Kittler's later work, uh, but it is always uh, present and has been a substratum of his writings throughout. I will quote here from the beginning uh, passages of an essay entitled Rock Music, the Misusers of Army Equipment, as Kittler revised and partly rewrote it for publication in 2002. While in the essay Kittler argues, as you certainly all know, that rock music relies on musical technology whose origins lie in the, world, in the two world wars and that rock music attests to it and its lyrics. This introduction uh, makes an even more sweeping statement. It connects the rock music of the 20th century with Nietzsche's view of Greek matrix and poetry, or as Nietzsche has it, the insertion of rhythm into speech for the sake of securing repeatability in time, expansion, spatial reach, and first of all, physiological innervation. Kittler writes, regarding Greek poetry, Nietzsche describes procedure of storage and procedure of transmission and information. First, a mnemotechnique which renders poetry less forgettable than prose, and second, a channeling of discourse which carries the information over long distances. Such uh, sorry, sorry, storing messages and transmitting them without relying on such dubious entities as the human mind or the human soul, this is exactly what defines media. In the rhythmic tic-tac, here Kittler quotes uh, Nietzsche, in the, uh, in the rhythmic tic-tac uh, of the Greeks following Nietzsche's analysis, it was, uh, uh, it was upon men and upon gods to supplement with their ears, their memories, and their feet, those apparatuses whose invention was still to come." End quote. Let me just underline the word to supplement. In the Greek, in the, in the Greek, in the German original, in the German original, that was like, like your, like your Greeking, you know? uh, in the German original, uh, uh, this obviously is as, as much borrowed from the French of Jacques Derrida as implementation in German is borrowed from computer science English. This obviously is a large scale history which brackets all smaller scale histories which play out between forms of literary techne and, and technological media. Here, all the stories that negotiate between literature and the media are just an historical episode or history as episode within the fundamental return of Greek supplementation and implementation, in an implementation, as Kittler used to say, under high technological circumstances. Still within the general logic of implementation, the supplementation of Greek ears, memories, and feet for the apparatuses to come is diametrically opposed to self-fulfilling prophecy, as we saw it in the, um, in the, in the net, uh, discourse networks. Supplementation as a metakinetic process coincides with what Nietzsche and the Nietzsche and Kittler highlight in their empathy with Greek ears, memory, and feet. It is providing or just leaving open, it means providing or just leaving open the site for the advent of implementation. An implementation that only for one single reason is not the advent of the God. And that reason is that gods themselves are forms of supplementation of the sites for implementation to come. That's at least, at least uh, Kittler's version. No doubt, uh, and this is my last caveat, the implator in St. Augustine is a Christological figure. 
are the Holy Spirit itself. The other task is to take into account that implementation in Kittler is a paradoxical term. On the one hand, implementation is a fundamental operation in history which has no outside. It is and organizes its own totality of history. On the other hand, implementation is bound in Kittler's account to the principle of the Turing machine. But it is improbable, as Kittler asserts several times, that the binarism of the Turing machine exhausts, to quote Kittler a last time, the possibilities of what we used to call nature. At least for the time being, the time of Kittler's Nova Scienza, our time, implementation is by its own theoretical stand standard at least provisionally provisional. But then being provisional is, I guess, exactly the temporal matrix of implementation, something to come. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, a magnificent uh, talk that um, tethers in so many ways to Gestell and rethinking and reformatting it. <clears throat> and thank you for the complicated temporality that you, or temporalities that you introduced to implementation, which Heather Forth will, will have to really um, reflect upon. My, my question um, just bounces off one, one uh, signifier that you released and which has to do with romanticism, the effect, and the um, dispositive of self-pedagogy. So uh, Kittler, at the same time, also uh, refers us to the, um, the kind of junkies of, of reading that one becomes in romanticism. Do you remember that, especially when you're coming down from Fichte, and a, a lot of women also suddenly became addicts of reading. And um, in, in the terms that introduced by um, Elisabeth Weber this morning, um, in terms of the delirious kinds of um, excesses that could be associated with love, does something happen to um, the self-education when it's so precipitously close to these abysses of, of addictive um, destruction in relation to, or not to self-education, but to implementation? Is it, is it at risk at every turn, or do you see it as something that, that um, as you suggested, it, it, it can have a kernel of solidity? You know what I mean? Can it blow up in our faces at any point? I according to Kittler. Um, I, I would say that, uh, I think that's a very interesting, uh, very interesting question. I think it has a lot of, of things to do with uh, what Elizabeth was, was talking about, in particular the, so to speak, the, um, the Bettina Brentano uh, possibility, so to speak, within uh, the romantic um, uh, dispositive um, um, from, I don't know whether I would have said that just by following the seminars in the 70s, but from rereading it and what it became in the 80s and, and 90s and what I tried to reconstruct with this idea of a, a history of implementation, um, I would perhaps say that um, the very fact that Kittler allows here, which is for, so to speak, the uh, the the human body to prepare itself as the site of something like a technological invention, inter intervention, uh, is perhaps in itself, so to speak, a more fragile uh, possibility than what he later called uh, implementation uh, as the question of the um, there is a moment in history where you have movable and non-movable uh, storages. Um, uh, that is a moment where, so to speak, um, the, the logic of history in a certain way um, unfolds itself in a kind of um, Hegelian solidity. Uh, maybe that um, this idea, and I found that was a very, a very interesting uh, thing for me to to come back to the 
in a certain way, more familiar um, uh, conception of the romantic um, literature in, 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 in Kittler, then, then romantic literature becomes the more precarious case. Uh, it becomes more precarious because I think that Kittler in other, other respects, in other instances, would have resisted once, one more time to allow something like um, transforming oneself into a quasi-technological apparatus. But I think that's exactly what he tries to describe in romantic literature, or what he already had described before he actually <laughs> um, embarked on his new project. Um, so, uh, to make it, make it short, I mean, the disciplinary history, uh, in a certain way, the f classical Foucauldian disciplinary history of romantic literature is in itself, I think, more fragile uh, than the um, technological history. I want to ask a question about the status of implementation as a concept or a metaphor, which you referred to at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that in toggling between the macro history, the media history, as, as an overall concept, as you said, this sort of deep time, and the local epochal changes that, as you're saying, uh, come from but differ from the Foucauldian model, that in those epochal changes, what we have are very different crucial media which drive the change. So in the case of Um 1800, you have uh, essentially a, a social or a pedagogical history, as I quite rightly said, and then an analog but uh, technological change around 1900, and then a, a binary and a Turing change uh, later in the 20th century. And I'm wondering if the medium can change in this way, what does that do to, the, to the, what you call the temporal structure of implementation? Is it an analogy? Is it a metaphor? Is it a concept? So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get a little bit more about the question that you posed at the beginning of the talk. So given that we have, from the perspective of the macro history, which claims at least to be a hardcore medial, medial technological history, a kind of unity, and then a basic medial difference in these different epochs, what, what, do we, what kind of a concept do we have, or an, a paraconcept do we have in implementation? From a Kitlerian point of view, as I understand it, um, I think one has to say that implementation is not a metaphor. Um, if it has a certain kind of, um, mm, uh, how can I say, um, uh, reservation, something which um, uh, makes it impossible for us to use such a word in the, the way we use other words, then it's rather because it does not have a kind of a, um, metaphorical prehistory. Uh, we there is no life world experience of it before we use it as a concept. It's uh, it's always there as a concept, and that's I think um, as difficult for us to um, cope with than the other way around. That something is all only a, a matter for and never so to speak makes it to um, to the um, concept. What what I mean is that. Um, I, I'm not sure I can, I can answer the question um, really in an exhaustive way, but um, I think that um, one um, dominant idea in Kittler is to construct media history uh, from the point of view of the present uh, and not of the past. Um, and that means that the that the changes in uh, in different media throughout history certainly play play a role. And I I know that I'm exaggerating. Certainly, you 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 are finding all kinds of sentences where Kittler says because of this media posit dispositive in 1650 this and that happens. So there is a, there are there are passages where he seems to argue so to speak, in a causal way uh, with um, certain media having that and that effect in, in history. But I, I don't think that that is, so to speak, the, um, mm, the, the real concept uh, behind that history. I think the more and more 
the more the history becomes a concept, it is a history written from the point of view of the present, and that's the point of view of the Turing machine, and that's the point of view uh, of the of the computer. And therefore, in a certain way, one can say that it's indeed always the same uh, uh, computer. Um, it's always the same. Um, Techno concept of technology that is organizing uh, the steps in um, uh, in history. Again, I'm aware that this is in a certain way very abstract and that it has to be reread with the way Kittler um, tackles um, um, things and in. Uh, and tackles descriptions of epochs in, in, in their particularities, and certainly that's what he's doing, and that what, he, what is so strong about his work, that he's doing that. But still, uh, I think that's the case. I only want, would, would like to, to, uh, to add that this does not mean, in my, in my understanding, that it does not mean that um, Hitler ever thought that um, referring to the present means to have all history, so to speak, end in history. Or, um, on the contrary, there is certainly a future to, to the present. Uh, and that's what I meant with the emphasis on provision, provisionality in the end. Um, um, and I, I think also, I, I, I think that I heard Kittler saying, but I'm not sure that's, maybe I'm making that up. Uh, but I think I, I, I heard Kittler saying at some point that, um, there would be the possibility for him to uh, construct uh, something like a system like Nicholas Loomer or so that, but that he preferred not to do so. And um, I think this has to do, in my view, with this uh, awareness, uh, and I think very deep and radical awareness, awareness of the provisionality. Um, uh, that means of the fact that this, uh, History which is written from the point of view of the present is a present which is not arbitrary, which is, has a um, uh, very specific um, structure, but which is not the end of the history. I, I hope that somehow answered the question. A part of a part of it, just like particular, just like in respect to uh, discourse networks, that just like explained it to me in a in a new kind of way. Just like at that point, just like and, and now, just like also in the discussion, I became a little suspicious uh, whether you are uh, or whether one could just like not replace uh, implementation again with a with a term, and that we we've, we've talked about this term, the term of verfahren uh, again. Uh, um, that uh, would. Um, uh, and, and that would be something very interesting to me, particularly just like um, verfahren, just like also as procedure device. You know, that means it has no real kind of like translation uh, into English for this. Um, um, Stefan once uh, suggested protocol, which I really liked uh, too. Um, as, as, as particularly something that just like then just like let us uh, would would um, make it possible to rewrite. Uh, then just like the kind of like uh, the, also the history, just like. Uh, uh, um, of the of the 20th century, just like from like 1900, so like from the first one, just like would be just like the just like the re repetition, so to say, or just like the copy of Foucault's uh, uh, um, story of discipline. Then just, that's the time, just like starting around 1800, uh, and then just like a kind of like uh, um, story of Verfahren that just like that would bring us here, just like uh, um, that would bring uh, Hitler close to um, indeed close to a project that just like could also be Luhmann's then uh, um, um, in. Um, in general, um, so maybe just like the, uh, or makes it even possible just like to um, to to um, name another attempt just like to write such a kind of like it's a history of uh, uh, media institutions from a present point of view. Um, uh, Cornelia Wismann's uh, project of media and, 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 and law. Then just like um, maybe could one just like actually um, see this what you're doing here just like uh, on implementation just like as uh, could one frame it as, as a bigger project of the father then. Thank you very much, Arne. Um, um, I guess, I guess um, what, what you are saying is, so to speak, too tempting for me to just to say yes, uh, um, um, because um, uh, that's a project I'm, I'm pursuing myself, and so I, I, I didn't, I wouldn't want to um, try any hegemonic. <laughs> 
uh, move here on uh, on on Kittler. Uh, but there is certainly a similarity, uh, and the similarity lies, as Avital said, in the temporality. The also the verfahren is something which is. Uh, only becoming, or you by describing something as a, as a verfahren, you uh, you ref, you refer to something in the future of it uh, 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 as what it will have been uh, if it has become a verfahren. So uh, I think in this very basic uh, sense, uh, there is a there is a conceptual uh, similarity, and um, mm, but certainly on the other hand. Um, um, killers, um, killers, everyone has to say at this point, uh, has a, a kind of specificity in, in the reference to, to the computer, in the reference to, um, um, uh, to technology in a Heideggerian sense that um, still has its own, uh, own structure. And so it's a, it's a cautious, yes, but also with saying, uh, I mean, I want to leave Kittler, uh, uh, as I understand he is, which may already not be what um, others would say that it was. Uh, and I, perhaps I, I wouldn't, if I may, uh, want to use that um, opportunity to say one more word about something which um, I found interesting uh, or important for me to understand while um, working on this. Um, and that was that I thought I understood that uh, what I tried here to um, exp to describe as uh, as the process of implementation is in fact something which defines our way of thinking of something like humanities in the first place, because humanities is not, as I said, it's not the sum total of some things which somehow have come down to us from, from antiquity. It is a precise uh, enterprise which begins in the moment that uh, uh, mathematics and uh, technology together become, so to speak, kind of a, a defining force in the architecture of, uh, in the epistemological architecture. And humanity is a much, much more recent invention than mathematics and uh, and technology, it is always the rep the response to it. Certainly, a response, so to speak, f which the material, which is so to speak, not the uh, mathematical and technology, gives to the advent, to the coming advent of of it. And and so I thought that what I tried to describe as implementation is the structure of what our world of world of departments is in the first first place. And uh, that was for me, in a certain way, the most, can I, can I say, the most interesting part of thinking this through along this, on the, along the line of this word. Um, I notice that when we talk about process history, we stumble a bit using time metaphors, perhaps present and future. I also noticed that twice, once here and once in your comments, tense was very important. Will have been. Hmm. Will have, I forget, will have Some been. Other you said. Understood. Understood. Um, I wonder whether we might not find some recourse methodologically useful in abandoning time metaphors for grammar. Uh, for tense metaphors, mm -hmm. uh, when talking about such things, future perfect tense seems very useful in that regard. And then one slightly larger question when we're talking about small histories and large histories, uh, it seems to me began because again we're talking about process with respect to Kipler implementation as a discourse of process, mm -hmm. that there's a whole history in philosophy to which we can connect that is the metaphysics or processual metaphysics, perhaps beginning with Aristotle. In that regard, I wanted to ask you, although the Greek now is Aristotle rather than, than Plato, uh, whether or not we might not find in Aristotle's metaphysics, or whether Hitler found in Aristotle's metaphysics, such concepts as energia and other things uh, of use. Uh, is it useful to connect to that tradition, 
uh, and go much further back than Nietzsche, Heidegger, Hegel. Thank you for for both uh, suggestions and and, and remarks. Um, um, I do agree with your first point, uh, uh, and and um, I think Kettler, at least to um, for much of his work, um, would have also agreed that uh, using the tenses, as you said, uh, is perhaps the mo more accurate way of doing it. I mean, I was thinking when I, I was talking about future, about, uh, and I I'm, I'm guess there are more, uh, uh, of, an, um, of an essay by, by Kittler, I don't remember the exact title, on, um, on, um, on future and, and statistical pr prediction. Uh, and uh, some of the things I was saying re refer to, to that article. So um, there is, again, that is not future in a philosophical sense that's perhaps even more closer to to a, to a tense as aspect of of time, but I, that's why I, why I use the word word future. Um, and the other thing, what you said is, um, um, I, I I don't know. Um, uh, I think others who have followed his later seminars um, could answer that question. I mean, from my how can I say historical. Um, historical knowledge from my historical training, I would say that uh, what you suggested um, as an um, Aristotelian, for, for instance, Aristotelian conceptuality for some things, that would hold for what he has to say about um, the uh, romantic literature. I mean, all his fascination with, Kittler's fascination with um, what he calls a little bit grossly uh, hallucination. Um, I can trace back, I, I, I guess, I, I'm confident to be able to trace that back to Energia in, in Aristotle. Um, but um, I'm not sure that would work for what he has to say about um, the 20th century and, uh, and his analysis of technology. I'm, I'm simply not sure. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.